Your product time. It's new. Yeah. All right. So, first new time. Yeah. Well, first new product, you can sign up for this. So we're going to have the new 3D robotics um, UAVs. This is the Iris. Um, they're on their way. These are the um, kind of ready to fly out of the box uh, from our friend Chris Anderson. Chris Anderson, who was the editor in chief of Wired, who quit to then start his own electronics company awesome. after talking to Lamore and seeing that, hey, I want to run a company too. Just back 30 million in funding for DIY drones, which is now 30 right. robotics. Oof. Oh, yeah. Yeah, intense. So this is his um, new product that's coming out um, very soon. We hope to stock. Um, next up, this is just a, a, a quick one. Um, Google has their own operating system that sits on top of the Raspberry Pi called Coder. It teaches you HTML5 and all sorts of other things. Uh, we work with them, and we have the official kit. Yay. So if you want to learn programming, um, like all the fancy fancy, uh, <laughs> fancy fancy, <laughs> fancy, fancy uh, you know HTML5 stuff, they have a. Yeah, it's like Java. Um, you actually learn to program. It's like JavaScript, HTML5, CSS. Yeah. So you, you actually get to do a lot, and cool. it's all in the browser. So we have a pack, and the card is pre-burnt, so you just um, pop it in and go. All right. Okay, we've Maybe got to... some telco splices. Hmm. These are often used for telephone wire, but since a lot of people use 22 gauge wire in their projects, I was like, this is pretty handy. Um, you don't want to do splicing. This is a uh, wire tap. So um, what you can do is if you have a wire that already exists and you want to tap into it, you snap this over and there's little uh, teeth inside that will cut through the insulation and grip onto the wire. So you can use this to, for example, tap into this yellow wire and, and you know, for the red wires. This is oh, that's tight. Yes, yeah, so this is kind of handy. And um, we also have a, a three-way tap. Um, and this one lets you tap three wires at a time together. So it's like a, it's called a butt splice. So it splices them together. And again, you put the three wires into the slots. What gauge does that have? This is 19 to 26. OK. And so 22 gauge basically works really well. Cool. Um, that's what we use. Um, and here's them. And yeah, they're used for telco stuff. And so you know, I was like, well, like, this will all be good for hobbyists. They have a little bit of like a, a silicone jelly in them to keep the um, splices uh, water yeah. proof so that you don't have to worry too much about um, oxidization, ox oxidization inside <laughs> or rusting inside. Uh, we also have a little mini two-way splice, which is just smaller. So it might be good for smaller projects. Um, and all these come in a pack of 10. Yeah. Andy. Those are cool. And yeah, they're useful. A lot of customers also um, suggested these to us. So We did get a lot of suggestions to yeah, carry like, this. So okay. Like, okay. Yeah, we're like, OK. So we you can see a little bit of the jelly in that photo. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of the shininess. So that it, 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 it's, it doesn't like affect the wiring. It just keeps it from, from water coming in. So they're yeah. meant to be used outdoors. And then um, next up, this is from our friend Joe Grand, the j -tagulator. Check out that pink. <laughs> Mask. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that fly? So the J tagulator. I think it's actually faster. Oh, the photo looks better. Yeah, the All photo's right. fine because we don't have a lot of time. Um, so this is a uh, USB device. You can see on the right there's a USB port. And then um, it runs like there's some chip on it. I don't know if it's a propeller chip. It yeah, it's a, a parallax propeller chip. And then a bunch of voltage buffers. And, and then on the, the green strips are where you actually connect the wires. So what the idea behind this is that it will auto detect a JTAG interface. So if you get a, you know, a Wi-Fi router or something and you're like, I know that there is a JTAG interface on here somewhere mm -hmm. because 99% of dev boards in the wild or, or products in the wild have a JTAG interface somewhere for programming. But you don't know which test point it is. Right. You just find the power and ground test points, which hopefully you can figure out. <laughs> if you can't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and then uh, you can connect every other test point you want to solder little wires and connect them to the, the green terminal box. Have you put this through its faces? I have not. OK. But I trust J Joe Grant, because he's kingpin, and it's, kingpin's a pimp. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, no, he, he's, he does good hardware. And yeah. he actually got a cool grant to do this. And he showed demos of this at uh, DEF CON. Awesome. So I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Uh, OK. All right. You know, this yeah, is like, I this see is, where he's coming from. This okay, is the cool. real thing. Right, this awesome, is like, awesome, yeah, this awesome, is awesome. Uh, and he's been working on this for like a year or so. I remember cool. him talking about this. And it's cool. And he says he uses it, because he's actually doing a lot of reverse engineering. And it's a beautiful board. It is a beautiful um, board. So I mean, it just takes a couple of minutes for it to like cycle through. But it'll tell you, like, I mean, it does like the basic JTAG. I think there's like an initializer query. Mm -hmm. So it just does that. And all you have to do is just, it has like some basic voltage protections, but right. just uh, you just got to make sure that you uh, use yeah. a 3 volt. It's like just 3 volt logic. A beautiful layout, too. Like, yeah. yeah, it's, it's really, really, really nice. Board. That's, that's a, a very pretty, pretty board. Yeah, that's yeah, where you got that, that pink mask. I'm pretty sure it was made in China, but um, it's assembled in the US at Parallax. OK, and then next up, we have some uh, new Adafruit products. Yes. First one. 
This is a, a very simple breakout. It's for the DS2413. Um, we have one wire temperature sensors. This is a one wire switch. So it uses one wire. You can change, you can chain as many as you want on a single IO line and they share the ground. So it's actually two wire ground mm -hmm. and one wire. And then you can control uh, two IO pins. They're uh, open drain, but they can also be inputs. Um, and if, you've, if you're into one wire, because it's nice, you can have a, multiple devices on one pin and they all have unique like 32-bit IDs and stuff. So it, it can be a handy way if you want to have like a chain of switches or something drivers and you know, you'd have a local power supply on right. each one, but you can, you can have the wires be like, like 30 meters long or something crazy. It's just not very fast because it's right. like this sluggish but uh, effective way of doing stuff. And I mean, it's, it's used sometimes in like home automation and stuff because sure. it's, yeah. you have one line going through. Anyways, one wire, it's one nice. Wire. Okay, and uh, do you want to show the stereo thing or the um, uh, USB? Yeah, we'll show the USB thing. Okay, let's do USB. Thing first. All right, yeah. so here we go. This is our new USB power gauge. This is exciting. Yeah, this is a power gauge, and I was inspired by a couple different projects I'd seen online, including um, a Kickstarter that had something similar. But I wanted something that was less just like a gadget and more like hacker friendly. Um, so this is designed specifically for hackers and makers. It's uh, open source, you can modify it. It uses an HTTP tiny 85 and it's got a bunch of uh, Charlie Plex LEDs. Um, one of the things I like about it is I added a serial output. So it has 9600 baud mm. TTL output, which will tell you the voltage and current. Um, you can reprogram it, of course, if you want. There's a standard like ICSP so breakout. This is for people who want to see how much current's going through USB for yeah. various devices, and they could even plug in something to see or log it. If yeah, you can it. log it. So yeah, it's meant for, I was actually building it because I was debugging some Raspberry Pi power draw stuff. Mm -hmm. And the Raspberry Pi is powered off of USB, and so it was like, I didn't want to haul out my power supply, I just wanted to plug into my computer, and then I wanted to see how much current was being drawn. So this is just a little power gauge, and okay. every LED lights up for every watt of power that's being used. Okay. So, yeah. here, really close. So yeah, there's uh, input over here, and then output over here, or whichever way you want to think of it, like a, sorry, I guess current goes this way. Um, so you plug this into, say, like your wall adapter, here's a USB. Um, extension cord and um, it's pretty simple there's a green LED and the green LED tells you if the voltage is above 4.5 volts a lot of times if you draw too much current the voltage will droop and under 4.5 a lot of stuff stops working really well that's kind of outside of the USB spec and then like let's say I want to charge like this I got this battery pack or something here yeah. so it's charged over micro USB and I plug that into the other side and then all the LEDs light up because this is drawing like an amp. And so you can see it um, powered up and you can see how much current is being drawn. And it's gonna be really handy for debugging your circuit or telling how much power something is using because oftentimes when you plug it into a computer or a wall adapter, it's really hard to get yeah. your multimeter in there, yeah. especially because it's like, there's like a four pin connector. So this is designed to make that a lot easier and it's assembled and ready to go. And you so can reprogram easy. it if you wanted to do things that are greater than amp, right? Well, it, yeah, it handles one amp just because there's five LEDs and I didn't, like <laughs> ni like 99% of stuff uses one amp. You can yeah. plug up to two amps in, through it. Yeah. Because um, the, the current sensor will just, it just, you know, the, the A0 know. output. There's also an analog output, one volt yeah. per amp. So if you just want to put your multimeter on it and you want to see an analog multimeter, that could be really handy. Or up to two amps over serial? Uh, yeah, I think so. Cool. So that's, it's just the LEDs. I'm like, we actually thought about it really hard about yeah. like how, how do you show even more data on five LEDs? We said, you know what, let's handle the most common case. And then if you want anything yeah. more complicated, yeah. use serial output or, or analog output. So this is a little power game. All right. Handy. Those are the new products. I use it every day. Oh, wait, we have the uh, oh, sorry. There's still one more. Still sorry. One more. Sorry. Um, show that the, the photo didn't come in, so it's oh, okay. uh, overhead only. Okay. Overhead not, only. Two new products are not over yet. Not but over wait, yet. But wait, there's more. There's, more. <laughs> uh, there's like a. a uh, Encore. So I also updated, um, we had a, a Class D amplifier board in the store, but I actually wanted to make one that was a little bit less expensive. Hold on, this is really dim. Maybe. Out a little bit. Hello? Really work. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see the chip. Yeah. Oh, it's so dark all of a sudden. Um, it's okay, maybe it's dark. Um, I don't know what to do. We don't have a, we don't have a picture. Hold on, let me see if I have the... Uh, Plain board. Here, I can hold it up. Oh. Okay, well, I was going to try to grab oh. it. Okay, so um, we have a, a Class D amplifier on here with uh, two stereo outputs on this side 
and then on the input you can have um, differential inputs and it's got uh, I've hooked up here to a bunch of speakers um, it can do uh, up to like, 2.8 watts into each channel from a 5 volt power supply, which is really handy. It also runs up to 3 volts, although you can't draw more than like I think a watt or so into uh, 4 ohms. You can do 4 ohms or 8 ohms. It's really good for portable projects, small projects where you need like it, it's really skinny. It's like a super teeny little board. So you can use it in your projects. Um, and you know you don't have to put the terminal blocks on it. And we also have a little dip switch that you can use to select uh, the gain. It can do up to 24 dB gain, which is pretty loud. Yeah. Hurt your ears. Yeah. All right, that's new products. All right, <laughs> new products. All right. And wait, there's no more. There's no more.